if you look at uh, the, for example, the coverage of China in the Western press or in remarks by Western officials, in particular U.S. officials, they often refer to China as the biggest, you know, or top challenge or biggest threat to the U.S. existence. How do you understand that kind of allegation or criticism? You can understand why they are worried about like a, a country like China, because China is working in the opposite direction to them. China is working to free other people and free itself from being plundered, from being humiliated. This is the country that has, the USA is a country that has thrived, survived, prospered from slave trade, cross-Atlantic slave trade. They enslaved the Africans for centuries. They plundered the resources of Latin America, the resources of Africa, the resources of Asia. They plundered even the resources of Europe. This is the country, if plunder today, exploitation of other people is removed, the USA will not be the powerful country that it is today. If there is equality in the dealings with each other, the USA ceases because it doesn't know how to deal with other people on an equal basis with other nations on an equal basis. It gets lost. It's worried today with the multipolar world that is emerging because its hegemonic interests are being threatened. It's not China per se. It's the interests of the Americans that are being threatened with a world that is more equal, that is more fair, that is more just. They can't survive in that world because their methods of existence are based on plundering other nations, on humiliating other nations, on exploiting other nations. Well, a related question uh, I would say, I would cite is, you know, the Chinese efforts to broker, uh, you know, basically a peace deal for Saudi Arabia and Iran to resume their diplomatic ties. And then you see the Chinese efforts to create uh, some conditions uh, for peace or for ceasefire between Russia and Ukraine in this Ukraine crisis. But then if you look at the reaction or response from the U.S. side, uh, you know, they try to dismiss uh, the Chinese efforts or belittle the Chinese efforts as something else. Why is that kind of response? You know, the Chinese efforts basically have been welcomed by the rest of the world. You know, people see that as very positive, more peace, more stability in the Middle East, more reconciliation. What's wrong with that? A world that is peaceful is not suitable for the United States because it prospers from conflict. It sets one humble nation against the other. It does not help to remove conflicts. It always creates conflicts. When you look at the conflicts that have existed in the world since 1776, when the USA was formed, the USA usually has a hand in it. It was when it doesn't have a hand in it, it doesn't work to resolve those conflicts. It works to perpetuate those conflicts because it thrives from conflict. It benefits from conflicts. When the world is divided, it becomes easier to exploit. It becomes easier to plunder. A united people cannot be plundered. A united people cannot be exploited. A united people cannot be made to fight each other and prosper. This is the country that benefits from wars. It prospers from wars. It creates wars as a business to make profits from. It makes profits from wars. Well, the famous example is the military industrial complex in the US. They certainly welcome conflicts and wars so they can you know, sell weapons, ammunition, and make a profit out of that. Yes, and they are also linked to the media. They are linked to the politics. They are the sponsors of the politicians. So they have to find conflict all the time. If no conflict arises naturally, they create it so that their industries make more and more money. And every year the U.S. publish you know, human rights record on every country but itself. Uh, what do you make of that? You know, some people would accuse the U.S. of using uh, the so-called human rights to interfere 
in the internal affairs of other countries, in particular the countries they are not happy with or they see as rivals. What do you make of that? The pious arm of human rights that the USA waves all the time is hypocritical. This is the country that has invaded other countries, killing so many people, including children. This is the country that has appropriated the resources of other countries, leaving those countries helpless. Look at Iraq today. 20th anniversary of... 20th anniversary. What is happening to the Iraqi oil money? When Iraq sells oil, all the money goes to the USA. It's the USA government that decides how much to give it to the Iraqi government to use. The Iraqi government has to submit a budget to the USA to get its own money after 20 years of that conflict. Is Iraq independent? Is Iraq sovereign? Iraq today is a colony of the USA. This is the country that occupies other countries' territories. For how long have they been there? Been in Guantanamo, on Cuban soil, a small island, the whole country of the USA, a huge territory, they still go and grab a small territory, not very far away from its own country, from its own coast. They have been occupying it for how many years? Several decades. The Cubans have been crying, give us uh, our land. The USA does not respect the territory. Can they really the USA claim Guantanamo to be their territory? Right. You can understand the same behavior in Taiwan. Same behavior. If today China or Russia went and did the same in Hawaii, what the USA is doing with Taiwan, would the USA accept it? They say, do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. Does the USA do unto others as it would like them to do on itself? This is an interesting perspective or the point here. You know, you mentioned about uh, the equality among sovereign nations. That's an exercise of democracy, you know, based on equal footing and expressing uh, one's wish or one's you know, needs or demands you know, equally in the international community. Do you think there's enough democracy in terms of that respect? If you don't respect the territories of other people, those territories are occupied by human beings. How can you respect human beings when you don't respect the territories which they occupy? How can you respect a human being when you don't respect the privacy of their home, the dignity of their home? A homeland is something very important to any human being. Every human being on this planet has a homeland. The homeland is their house. It's their home. That's why it's called homeland. You don't just get into somebody's house. You don't just get into somebody's country and interfere. If you don't respect the sovereignty of a territory, you cannot respect the human being who lives in that territory. You cannot claim to be committed to their democratic rights. You cannot be co claim to be committed to their human rights. What are human rights without a homeland? What are human rights or democracy without sovereignty? When your rights can be trampled on, when your leaders can be toppled any time, when your leaders can be killed any time, Look at what they did to Saddam Hussein. Look what they did to Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. Look at what they do to other people's leaders. Look even at the attitude, the arrogance towards other people. They never respect the leaders of other countries.